Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use dev commands in Valheim and talk about why they're so useful. Some people think of them as just cheating, but it's honestly a whole way that you can make games sort of inside Valheim. You can do crazy things with servers, and I'll kind of get into some of that later on in the video. But for now, let's go directly to how you enable dev commands in the first place. This will only work on a local world. Using dev commands on servers is more complicated than what I'm showing you here. I'm going to specifically talk about dev commands for a solo player kind of thing, um, so that you can build stuff and then you can basically make servers and then upload them to dedicated servers. So you can do stuff with de dev commands to build and then upload them to a server where people can't easily use dev commands. And that's really a great way to play the game. So let's get into it. First, getting dev commands enabled. Open Steam up, go to games, and then view games library. Find Valheim. Right click on Valheim and click properties. Go down to general here, and at the bottom, you see where it says launch options, type dash console. To begin, press F5, which will open up a console. Yours will show different things, don't worry about that. Start by typing dev, dev, commands, and press enter. This will enable development commands, which is things like fly, as you can see. Now that I typed fly, I can hold space and go up. I can move around like this, and if I hold shift, I move around really fast. And if I press control, I go down. And if I want to get out of fly mode, I just type fly again, and then I'll fall down. So when you type just ghost, you're invisible to enemies. So now that I've typed ghost, I'm not flying anymore, but you can see that nothing can see me. This is ghost mode. But if I were to type ghost right now, I'm visible. And now look, he reacts, you can see me. He has no idea that I'm here. You can even see him sniffing right in front of me. Huh, how expressive. I can just type it again. He finishes his attack and then he's like, oh, where'd he go? I'm gone. Another command that people use is god mode. So when you have god mode enabled, then nothing can hurt you. So things will still see you and attack you. Like if we run over here and then we turn ghost off. He'll see us and he's about to slam me. But nothing happens. See, I don't take any damage. So you do still get knocked back, but nothing will hurt you. And as you can see, objects in the environment still take damage. Now, the next major console thing is debug mode, which is essentially creative mode. After you've typed dev commands, just type debug mode, right, like that. And now you have some hotkeys you can press, such as B. And now that I press B, you can see on the screen it said no placement cost true. Now I can build anything that I want, as long as it's a valid placement. And you can quickly get material this way if you're messing around on a private server or something. See, you then spawn the stuff of the item, right? So you just kind of make items quickly that way. It's faster than typing in the console commands to spawn items, but I'll still show you those next anyway. Let's say that you've lost your body or Valheim has played some terrible curse on you. Then you need to have debug mode or dev commands enabled. You do not need debug mode enabled. And you'll type spawn and then the item name. For example, let's start with something like locks me pie. You can see that as we type, the item gets populated. So it says, there's things I've found like what you're typing. We have lox pie and lox pie uncooked. So you can kind of type things and look. You can explore the items that you can spawn by just typing the first part of them. And it's really, really useful. And there's all sorts of things you can spawn. For now, just look at something like bread. If you want to spawn bread, you can just do it once and it'll spawn one bread. If you want to spawn multiple bread, then you can do spawn bread 10, and it'll spawn 10 bread. Now, if you're doing this for items, the process works a little bit differently because items have levels. So let's say we're going to spawn a sword, 
And we're going to spawn, spawn the black metal sword. I want to make it level four. So I'm going to go sword, black metal, one, because we're only spawning one of them, and then level four. So you can heal everything if you're in dev, uh, debug mode just by going into the hammer menu and just repairing anything. Here you can also make any item at any point without any crafting benches when you're in debug mode. So see here, I can just make this. Joseph Bane just shows up in the inventory, blah, blah, blah. This is more how you would manage other players if you're a moderator on a dedicated server and they have something wrong, something crashes. This is what you would do to kind of fix that situation. If somebody lost their items, you would just replace what they got. Obviously, if someone were to be given this Jotun Bane, they would have zero appreciation whatsoever for it, so obviously that's not ideal. You really want people to, like, earn the items. It's, it's, it's a much, much more fun and thrilling way to play. If you think that you can have fun just spawning stuff, it, it gets old really, really fast. So remember that most of what I'm telling you here, I'm telling you so that you can help kind of have better multiplayer experiences, and you can use this information, maybe to make videos or do something creative with it. Try not to just not even ruin your Valheim experience by using dev commands, okay? The next useful command on the list is the portal. So if we take a look at our Valheim map, and if you want to teleport somewhere, what you'll do is type go to, and then two numbers. Let's pick zero and zero, which is the direct center of the world. Now, let's also type fly right afterwards, because you don't want to teleport somewhere and then just either get stuck or killed by something. So you can imagine, there's this is the center right here. This is 8,000 on the Y-ish, and this is 8,000 on the X. This is negative 8,000 on the X, and this is negative 8,000. So if you want to go over here, you have two positive numbers. If you want to go over here, you have two negative numbers. If you want to go here, you have a negative and a positive, and if you want to go here, you have a positive and a negative. All make sense? Can you use another? Now that we're on the edge of the world with a beautiful view, let's do the weather settings. So if you want to change the time of day, type TOD and then a number between zero and one. Zero will be essentially midnight, right? And then TOD one, is the same thing. <laughs> Confusing, right? So what you need is TOD 0.4 is like sort of the middle of the day. And then 0.7 is dusk. So it starts getting dark right after that. And that's how you change the day. But what about the weather? The variable for weather is a bit counterintuitive. It's just ENV. And then you can type clear. This will clear all the weather, so if there's fog or rain, it'll clear everything away. As you can see, there's not really much weather going on here, so it looks the same because it was actually already clear. If I type N rain, then the sky will slowly start to transition. Everything gets a bit foggy, and our rain begins. And now I can just type env clear, and then all of that rain will disappear. If it's not working, give it a little bit of time and be patient, because it does take a couple seconds for the environment to clear up. Now, there's a little bit more you can do with spawning. You can do more than just spawning items, you can also spawn monsters. And this is actually what the game does as you run around. It basically just rolls dice and randomly spawns monsters around you. So, in order to do this, you can type spawn, just like an item, and then the name of the monster. We're going to go with motor, so we're going to type dragon. You'll notice there's a lot of discrepancy, so even though her name is motor, and everything refers to her as motor, she's just called dragon. And often there's like typos and other things, so getting to learn all the dev commands, it's more of an art. It takes time to remember what everything's actual reference is. What you can even do here is spawn multiple ones, so we're going to spawn three motor. And it's pretty crazy, they actually just spawn like that. Let's say you have some other players, and 
You guys have been playing a lot of Valheim, and you feel like things aren't really that challenging anymore. Well, you can make custom areas that have literal armies of monsters to fight. So, let's show you. Spawn, fueling, and we're gonna spawn... I don't know. Oh yeah, they're called goblins. That's right. Spawn, goblin... Mm, that's one ten of them. And then, boom, you got a pack of ten goblins just chilling in the Black Forest. And then, you want to see something really cool. I mean, this is lame, right? They're just chilling there. What are they going to do? They're not doing anything. How boring. But if we spawn a deer, oh, maybe like nine deer to give them a fair chance. Whoa, what's, what's going on here? We got some action. Some goblins running around. And they'll chase these deer for a while. So you can basically make enemies and then make the enemies they hate and use deer to have things run around and then kind of populate areas in ways that you don't know, even though you spawned all of the enemies. The real challenges in this game, obviously, are the starred enemies. So how do we spawn them? Well, let's spawn a goblin. Let's spawn three of them and make them level two. So the way it works is the default is one, that's no star. Two means one star and three means two star. So we spawn three two-star goblins. Oh man, just seeing these guys gives me the creeps. Little bastards. Run, dear, run! Now, we can do all sorts of crazy stuff, right? It's cool how they kind of, as long as you use monsters from a different biome, they do actually stay alive, and you can make little areas and populate them with goblins. Like, I could build a fort and fill it with goblins. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. If you want to support my work, then please consider checking out one of the dedicated servers. Playing Valheim on a dedicated server with some of your friends is one of the best ways to experience the game. It's just really fun being able to connect to a world that other people you know can join whenever they want. It's similar to a Minecraft server, except Valheim, honestly, Valheim's just, it's awesome. I don't know what it is about Valheim, but I like Valheim more than Minecraft. Maybe that's just me, but... I said it. It's true. I, I love it. It's just, it's so cool. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.